Renato Simeone, the lead developer of and owner of Reza Studios, just released the November 2023 developer development update for all for Automobilista 2. And I thought in this video that we should have a little look at it since I'm in the beta and I can talk about a lot of content. I thought let's read what he has discussed. Um, disclaimers only, I will only be able to talk about the stuff he has disclosed and not the full details since the up beta update is still in, not for media. But let's get into it. Okay, so it starts with, as you can see here, it starts with this McLaren. I don't fully know which one it is, but it's obviously a very cool one. So then it starts with this. Greetings everyone. It's been almost five months since our last day of update in June and almost three months since our pub last public release. So yeah, as he says here, it hasn't been it has been very long due to them have releasing V1.5 and then that they will be talking about it here because here he says this isn't a sign of AMS2 development slowing down because they've been working a lot in the beta, which I have shown you. To do, those of you who used to following these dev updates will have read a lot about the challenges to develop or manage a game of this size. Many cars, many tracks, many simulation variables, all of which on the constant development with new features and new variables being brought in all the time, keeping goalposts ever moving and making it harder for them to make it all work cohesively. So that's an interesting point that he's talking about. And obviously here he talks about V1.5 that after the last V1.5.0.5 update that has been primary guideline for all the fronts, polishing everything to the best we can within the window time we have. So they tried to polish everything, but they couldn't. So then we then they dug in deeper, as we can read here. As we dug into it, what was at first a development guideline became a bit obsessive. Simply put, we would not have a new public release until we felt, felt everything was good as we could possibly make it, or at the very least, heartwarmingly close to it as far as the core of the simulation is concerned. Physics, FFB, AI, audio, and all related functionalities. So he, but I can basically tell you what's happened, which he tells here with the V1.5.3 update, was that they, I will take up the thing, talk as it, as it, if were, if it were a gold mine. That's how I will describe the situation. So, so they were digging and digging and thought, ah, oh, this might be good, but let's double check. So then they double check that the mine is empty and boom, they found another big lot of gold. So they keep digging and then they think that's empty. They just double check and then they find another one and another one, another one. So it kept going on like that for a very long time. So that was the big issue about this time. And then there was one, at one point they thought, oh, the gold mine is finished. So let's r turn off the leaderboards. And let's roll it out. And then right before that, oh, they found more gold. So they've had quite a few issues. The people in the forum haven't been so happy, but we in the beta have been because the updates have been very fun due to the new and polished developments. So if we r look further into it, he keeps talking about it. But this is very interesting here. After this release, we'll certainly still have great many new things to achieve. A few solvable niggles will have slipped by, which will demand quick fixing, and bigger problems will remain to be understood and improved on. Plans are already in the works for 2024 and beyond for further substantial progress, including a complete GUI overhaul, an area we didn't do much work on for this update. So GUI general user interface, that will be very interesting to see if they make it a bit different. Maybe, maybe a bit closer to RF2. I thought if I remember correctly, that one was nice. Quite clean, but this one is still nice, the one in AMS2. I like it. Some updates on the rendering engine, another area we haven't dug into beyond adjustments here and there. 
and that they will bring up a new update they have done and they have also brought in a new person for whose expert i think they said the shader expert so they will help them fix the ren help with the rendering engine so maybe the problem with the guardrails being all flickery maybe the rendering distance for shadows and then you have nights and the problem with the headlights all of that might get fixed but you never know a content management system for those who are interested in parts of the game but not in others and who might want to combo that with mods for a more focused experience so to me it seems like you can pick and choose so let's say you like street circuits so then you choose all the street circuits in the game and then you like driving go-karts around them so then you can just choose go-karts and since you only like those cars you can choose them in this content management system so they are the ones that show up but then there should obviously be an issue where you a thing where you can actually see more than just what you've chosen but that would be interesting or maybe that's a favoriting system which they might add so you can say me who likes the formula ultimate gen one can favorite that and silverstone and spa and monaco and uh, some of the new cars which are new in this dev update can favorite them and they all go into a different sign that's what i thought they had with the stars but no that's actually dlc cars then we have a more robust multiplayer dedicated server tool as well as as well as plenty more cool cards and tracks to fill up the dots towards the end game of an n of an encompassing career mode that ties the whole thing together so that's very interesting the multiplayer dedicated server tool that will be interesting maybe dedicated i uh, i think that's what they are doing like running off someone's computer computer if i'm sure i'm not so sure about multiplayer server things but i've heard a few things about the tool being very basic and then their broadcasting tool not being so good so hopefully they fix both of those and obviously the multiplayer netcode has had a few issues and that i will get into further in this in this video because they he talks a lot about it here and then do we have anything here talking about i don't think anything interesting there then he obviously talks here about them yeah they thought they were going to update it so they turned off the time trials wasn't sensible to turn it back on again so that's true then you have this historical track pack part two the ams2 history tour continues so they're adding i think it is three or four new four additional historical versions for more modern tracks already present in the game so first off we have barcelona 1991 so this one from the image i have in my head and you can read here obviously the history behind it but it looks a bit the same i don't remember if it is the full like with the turn three i think it is cuts off short but don't take my word on that as in instead it doesn't go the whole long modern straight it cuts off a bit for the national circuit which will be also getting in this up in this update and that i can tell you because it was in the public version and is has been in one of my previous videos but then but what's also unique about it except it being old is then layout where you have the far quick i think it's turn 10 but onto the first actual straight after the main back uh, after the pit straight that one so the other straight on this track instead of that corner you go straight and then you take a different tighter right hander and then you go on a short straight which then heads left onto the straight we normally use so that's a bit of an interesting layout then we get into these two interlagos 91 and 93 so they are very close to the modern layout and they're very the layouts are very close to each other but there are some obviously historical things out around it which are different and why has renato chosen it is because he's i 
believe it is his favorite driver, Ayrton Senna, won the races in 91 and 93. So he obviously wanted those. And they're quite fitting with the cars which are coming. Does it say anything special? Okay, so it just says that the undulation and curbs are a bit different. Obviously, I will put the link down below if you want to read the whole thing. A Montreal 91. This one I really like because it has a lot of different things, but especially, as they say, the new the corners which were there. Yeah, the track was still tight and big swoosh curbs and lack of runoffs. Yeah, but there is. Did he talk about that? Okay, he doesn't talk about it. But here, I don't really recognize what part of the track this is. But there is one certain part which I really love. But this Montreal 1991, I think you will like it too. It's really fun. And it is actually different. And here we come to the coupe things. Oh, but before that, for a reasonable $7.99, you'll get all four layouts, which is a bit cheaper than part one. And I can understand that. I don't know what part one included. I just know that part two is a bit, uh, not, yeah, the circuits aren't that different. And eight, for eight bucks, even though I live in Sweden and the Swedish currency is horrible, eight dollars isn't a lot. Now we get into the Formula High Tech cars. So they are inspired by, I think it is the 92 93 season for Gen 1 and Gen 2, where they include one McLaren each year, and then you have three models. So I hope I'm not leaking anything. Uh, or are there three? Mm, we'll see. Well, you can see here you have this one, which looks cool. Oasis, and with the blue, looks a bit like a Williams, in my opinion. They obviously have the McLaren. And here, with the green Oasis, that really looks like a Benetton. And it has that more modern style of front wing, which I always thought was interesting. Well, that one's what I think of modern, whilst this one is actually maybe more modern. Well, we'll get into it. And something which is very unique to them is they have active suspension, which is a new thing for sim racing. There is no other sim which simulates it properly, like AMS2. So then if we scroll down, they obviously have other technologies, which you can see here. And this video, you will be able to see. But if we just look at it fully here, you can see here, the car bounces a lot. The passive suspension car. This is showing for... Hmm. And then you have the active suspension one. And you can see... You can see the surface is moving quite a bit. But the actual car isn't a lot. And that is quite cool, in my opinion. So here you can see the Formula High Tech Gen 1. Yeah, four distinct generic models along with officially licensed McLaren MP4-7A. So here yeah Williams got to jump on everyone with the FW14B traction control, launch control and active suspension and then other teams try to catch up. So you can see the McLaren, we had already the Williams and the other car. But uh, these cars are quite cool. But I more like I like these cars more, the Formula High Tech Gen 2. Because these have three distinct generic models. This one was also Aha. Uh -huh. I think this could be a typo. Because I don't remember this one having four. But this one, three, you have the Williams and you have the Benetton, it seems. And these are very cool because they have active suspension, traction control. Fully automatic gearboxes, which you can change, and also ABS with and the form of the blown diffusity trick. So let me just go through what all of these things mean. So active suspension, as you saw, that keeps the level flat of the of the uh, car, so you so they could have the downforce more peaky. So you have optimal downforce basically all the time and they can have aggressive amounts of downforce. 
and they don't have to work at a wide range of yaw and lift, yaw and roll and other stuff. Then you have traction control, which limits the amount of spin you have in terms of when going on throttle, and that's and ABS is amount of lock, as you might know from GT3 cars primarily. But then you have launch control, which I've probably seen in very cool sports cars when they're trying them out on Car Wow or Top Gear. And that is when you, or they actually have it in Forza Horizon 5, where you, I don't know how they do it in this game. I just know that you have to like, in the car, I think you have to press a button and then it goes into launch control. Then you have to like, I think it is push on the brake. And then the throttle. I'm not sure. I'm, I've never driven a supercar. And then it builds up the revs. Keeps them there. And then you release the brake. And then you go. And then it uses like a clutch and other systems. To try and get an optimal launch. And then the blown diffuser tick uses, trick uses the air, air hit in these cars to into the diffuser as in blowing more air which which increases downfall since the diffuser is used to expand the air so when you have more air going that way and expanding it creates a low pressure zone which in, in, in causes downfalls watch my video on ground effect if you want more on that and then we get oh and the automatic gearbox controls shifting for you then you also have Williams even dubbed into the CV into CVT transmission and better turned into four wheel steering, although neither have ever actually raced. And then you have the aerodynamic development and then all of the other stuff which they describe the engines which go into this, the audio development, which is very interesting. What they've done because it's they have improved the outside or uh, uh, what's it called? The la uh, the audio, not of the onboard, but the externals. Yeah, that's what they said. So, can we listen a little bit here? Let's see if we go here. We can hear. So that is uh, shows it very well oh, how the audio will improve. And then the physics update, yeah, the big thing which they found in these updates, I think, were, yeah, the tire treads, they improved a lot. Because one little, yeah, hey, even, even a 0 0.01 change in any of these coefficients produce a perceptible difference in handling. So they have changed them a little bit and the cars have actually improved a lot. So the cars have become more peaky. And what that means is that when the cars, high performance cars, when you were driving them like quickly like this, they were sliding a lot, but they weren't actually breaking traction. And there was some weird thing about actually gaining grip, having more grip than expected at higher slip coefficients, slip angles, there was some odd stuff happening. But then they figured out that with the tire threads and now you actually can spin in high performance cars. And it's actually more fun because it feels like the tires have more grip, but it also feels like sometimes they don't. So that's the big thing. They will obviously, uh, they will fine tune things. And there, and here we get into the wet weather physics update. So they found out that they could ch no they do what they basically did was that they in they at the start introduced some wet lines being possible or yeah because that's realistic and then they changed it so water puddles yeah they adjust the properties and then they could get as deep as 16 centimeters i remember you, i drove a f during thunderstorm conditions around silo Modern Silverstone in the Formula Ultimate Gen 2. And right, uh, right before getting on the first straight, 
Yeah, before the first straight, there was this huge puddle covering the whole track, which it would just aquaplane over because you couldn't get over it. But it seems like they have improved the depth and the drainage of of uh, puddles, which is good since then we can get sort of non we get in we get possible wet weather racing, not impossible. And this is also interesting. They have improved the AI. So they have improved basically a few parameters. Performance. Yeah, they have changed the performance of them. So they drive back quicker by calibrating them and doing line readers. Then you have the racing behavior as in how well they race each other and you. So overtaking and incidents, which has been interesting. And then AI pit stop strategies have also been worked on. They obviously still, they will never be perfect, but any perf improvements are always good. I don't know if he has talked about it here, but I've heard they have some other improvements going on. But they won't arrive now. I don't know when they will arrive. Probably not this year. But I've heard that there are some quite cool stuff which can happen. Yeah, so that was about the AI. And shout out to AMS2. Due to Paddock Club members for the constant influx of reports and feedback during the V1.5 cycle on this one. Without so much progress both on physics and AI, a development would not have been attainable. So thanks to me. <laughs> I'm just joking. Multiplayer development, the only thing they've done, which I think is really cool, is they've added a multiplayer logging system. As in, if you report an issue, then, okay, this was before this multiplayer logger. What you had to do was, ah, Renato, I have an issue with multiplayer. Renato asks, what? Then you might say, oh, this guy got disconnected when doing this, yada, 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 and Renato's, let us try. Goes to Razor, let's try this issue. Boom. They can't they can't replicate it. Now it goes, Renato, I've got an issue. Renato says, hand me over the multiplayer logger report. Then you go, boom, thank you. And there you have it. You can actually get de they can actually get details on what was the issue. So even if they can't replicate it, you can then send in and give them what was the issue. So that makes it easier for them to actually fix some of these common bugs which aren't so common for them. So that's good, so we can get some multiplayer developments. Then let's get into some other developments. So you can see here they have the dedicated safety car models for F1 cars and also trucks. And I've also heard they have for carts too and... Yeah, and then they also have scheduled... Full course yellows, which I've tried, and that's interesting. Then they fix some legacy issues, and what that is are some bugs which have been for the game ever since the V1. And you have driver head animations, they used to be very odd, and now they've fixed them. So they are more realistic. Then replays, they made it possible so you can change if you want motion blur or not. Then live track, they've added some visual and audio cues when the driving of the racing line into the dirty edges of the track happen. Then they have added some, to f they have finished the remaining damage and animation components, which is interesting. Then they will run appropriately matching helmet designs, gloves and driver overall of to their car livery. That one I will have to see because whenever I try and drive an F1 car, it just shows me an orange helmet. And that isn't fun because I drive in like a Mercedes liver and it's just an orange helmet. I know maybe Hamilton does similar stuff, but not orange with black. That doesn't look good. And this is what I was talking about with the, the shader expert to join them. So he just joined this week and he's already added fixed emissive materials on Sparks. So does that mean... That we will be getting sparks? Hmm. That's very interesting. If that actually works. But now, let we see a bit here. You will be able to see the picture soon. But let me read. And on that bombshell, 
We have covered all we had to share for this dev update. Hopefully the news and in-depth of the work within this week next release makes up for the relatively long gap since the last one and the silence in between. We know we have pushed everyone's patience a bit and generally speaking with the way we have approached MS2 development over the years and I appreciate some of you might have preferred a more well-rounded consistent experience even if it meant narrow narrowing the ultra wide scope of the sim but that just wasn't the game we had set out to make. Hopefully we go through developing our vision things start to make a bit more sense and more, more of you find that patience duly rewarded. But what's this Dunlop? Let's see. Oh, I think I recognize that. Dunlop bridge, blue and yellow curbs over some astroturf and asphalt. Is that Le Mans? Well, let's read and see. With this update, MS2 should be in a great place for its 2023 grand finale at some point in December, which is in less than... Wait, what's the date? The date's the 19th as of recording this, which means that in less than two weeks, December arrives. So Renato must be cooking for and has been for a long time. So what it says, having wrapped our historic formula projects for this year, for this year, remember, it's time to set the clock back to the future for a different type of racing, a machinery altogether. We will cover that and all that is to come with it in our final catch up this year. And that I don't think is a modern uh, Porsche. Well, I mean a modern Porsche, but I don't think it's a special one. And then let's see, here you have my post, obviously, and a lot of positive feedback. So, the short thing about what has been brought up. Well, a lot of improvements to AI, multiplayer, shaders, everything has improved. Mainly the physics. Then they have also added the Formula High Tech Gen 1 and Gen 2. Then they have also added historical track pack part two. Now the big question is, when will this release? Well, as Renato hasn't said any release dates, I can't give you any. The beta, I can only tell you, with being ex in the beta, I don't think you will wait long. But I don't think you, it will be very soon. It's sometime between soon and very soon, in my opinion. But you never know. Renato is a little, little is a guy who can just. Oh, by the way, here's a brand new update. It improves everything, because normally we are in the beta and we say, "Oh, Renato, this issue," and then Renato says, "Already fixed in our version." When well, we will get that version soon so it's a bit of a guessing game as always but what's not a guessing game is my next video well it is but i was just like that so to get a good uh, segue but yeah my next video hopefully will be on the update you should never know but until then i've been racing legend you've been my basic first thank you for watching goodbye